hay un dicho en Puerto Rico que dice cuando el río suena es porque agua trae quiere decir que cuando todo el mundo tiene la misma problemática o la misma queja entonces pues ahí no falla pienso que Puerto Rico es una isla única pero eh, hay mucha corrupción mucha desigualdad no hay respeto yo he demostrado que el cambio es posible claro que sí es posible yo soy el león fiscalizador you can call me the lion man Saludos, compartan lo que van a ver para que vean lo que es el descaro en Puerto Rico. ¿Está bien? Lorenzo Delgado es kind of like a cross between a citizen investigator, a social media influencer, and a professional government troll. Páralo ahí. Páralo. When he goes live on Facebook, you don't really know what you're going to get. A todos ustedes les va a interesar muchísimo donde estamos. Sometimes he's just driving around in his car. Saludos. Sometimes he's sitting at home in his studio, venting about the latest political scandal. que supuestamente tenemos. And sometimes he's about to make headlines. A head-shaking discovery in earthquake-ravaged Puerto Rico. Life-saving supplies just sitting in a warehouse in the southern city of Ponce. That aid is believed to be from Hurricane Maria, which means it's been sitting around for more than two years. Remember that warehouse that was discovered in Puerto Rico at the beginning of 2020? The one that was filled with old, undistributed emergency supplies from Hurricane Maria. That was him. Coman, estufa, miren, tantas que se necesitan. Y la gente, sin tener donde cocinar. Y aquí las estufas perdidas. Miren esto, calpa, tantas que se necesitan. Miren cómo están los pampas de la avenida mía. Y el pueblo necesitando. Y ellos descariando, politiqueando. Miren, aquí tiene que haber gente votada. Aquí, tiene que, aquí alguien tiene que pagar por esto. Alguien es responsable de esto. Lo ve, lo ve. Mire, yo me levanté, me vestí, me puse los zapatos y vine para acá porque estoy indignado. Esto es una vergüenza ajena. A warehouse filled with millions of dollars in crucial, undistributed aid would have been a big story anywhere. But in Puerto Rico, people were still recovering from the worst hurricane in its history. Hurricane Maria slamming into the island, and one official saying the island is destroyed. And first major earthquakes in more than a century. The island reeling. At one point, the entire island losing power. And it was an election year. The governor immediately launched a criminal investigation and held a press conference to try and calm everyone down. Ni a la gobernadora, ni a los funcionarios, ni al pueblo se le miente en una situación tan seria como es una emergencia. Local politicians released videos promising it wasn't their fault. No que me perdonen, pero yo no sabía dónde estaba eso, ni que eso era un almacén que lleva ahí, como dice un contrato que salió desde hace más de un año. It was all anybody wanted to talk about. And Lorenzo was eager to talk to everyone. The first time I met Lorenzo was just a couple weeks after his big discovery. He'd already built a loyal following, but this was different. He had hundreds of thousands of followers, and even more importantly, credibility. People now seem to think he had the potential to change Puerto Rico's future. Este viene aquí mucho. La gente aquí le conoce. Sí, el mundo entero lo conoce. Mucha gente está muy agradecida. Aquí. Los Puerto Rico hacen muchas cosas bien. Mira, 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 mira que es linda. When you're walking around, how often do people recognize you or say hi? All the time. Honk the horn. All the time, everywhere that I go in Puerto Rico. I spend a few minutes with them. I say hi, whatever. I hear them. They need somebody to listen to their, their problems. 
To be honest, I feel like this is like a volcano. But the, it's right there, it's hot. Anything happened to blow. And I think they see that on me, that somebody really stand up and say, no, this is wrong. When people talk about corruption here, which they do all the time, they mean the textbook kind. Public officials pocketing money, giving contracts to their friends, abusing their power. But they're also talking about the subtler, more pervasive things that affect everyday life. Shitty roads, spotty electricity, extremely poor government services, and a complete lack of accountability. Almost four years ago, when Hurricane Maria leveled the island, it put all of those nagging problems on display. And the slow recovery, which in many ways is still ongoing, has been like a turning of the knife. People know it's the US government's fault too, But in Puerto Rico, where decades of mismanagement and scandals have bred widespread distrust, few things unite people like their shared hatred of the island's government. Alguien que no conozca la corrupción aquí en Puerto Rico, quizá lo lo deje pasar, ¿verdad? Nada más que los que están en la olla, como dicen por ahí, son los que saben. Corrupto, sí. Y eso todo Puerto Rico lo sabe. El gobierno, el gobierno es malo. Todo el mundo quiere coger dulce. Acomodar toda la familia. Bueno, describir el gobierno de Puerto Rico fácil con una palabra, pues ine- totalmente ineficiente. Todas las instituciones se han destruido. Que se pongan a hacer su trabajo y que deben estar robándole al pueblo. Sí, sí, sí. Saludos, mi gente, saludos. Esto en un momento dado iba a ser un coliseo. En el estadio fallido, gastaron 20 y pico millones de dólares y después dijeron, ay, no tenemos dinero. O sea, en serio, ¿sabe? al descaro, así le roban al pueblo fondos públicos, fondos del pueblo de Puerto Rico. Y igual que este lugar, hay muchos en Puerto Rico, pueblo. Este no es el único. Elefantes blancos que le llaman. Inversiones que ciertamente las hacen para algún tipo de para beneficiarse de alguien porque corrupción pura Part of why Puerto Rico frustrates Lorenzo so much is that he knows it doesn't have to be like this. His family moved to Florida when he was a teenager and he stayed there for decades. He graduated from high school, got married, had kids. He didn't move back to Puerto Rico until a few years ago when he returned to take care of his grandfather. That's when he realized how broken things were and how little accountability there was for local politicians. So he created a Facebook page and started documenting potholes with his phone. Today, Lorenzo's page is his full-time job. He has donors, although he won't tell us who they are, and sponsors, lots of them. He makes enough money to live rent-free at his grandfather's house, eat, pay his bills, and buy new equipment. The Lion Man is still centered around the same idea, that Puerto Ricans deserve better. But now Lorenzo has better gadgets, more followers, and a broader variety of content that includes political commentary, philanthropy, and live public sleuthing. He also travels all over the island, targeting places and politicians that people might not otherwise hear about. We are somewhere in the mountains right now on our way to go meet Lorenzo. He just found some containers that have government papers inside. Are you gonna go live? I'm going live. You got my camera, I'm gonna have my headlight. I'm live you. And you got your shirt? my shirt. Yeah. So do you, do you know what you found or you sort of know what you found? Not, not everything yet? No, no. I don't know yet. I, I got an idea. Saludos, mi gente. Saludos. Pero es algo bien importante y me encuentro en el pueblo de Maricao que ustedes van a ver. Soy grande, más todo el equipo, pero es como único. Puedo entrar aquí para que ustedes vean Esto al parecer 
era del archivo histórico, por llamarlo así, ¿verdad? Que le llaman. Oh my God. In the parking lot of an abandoned and overgrown public baseball field, Lorenzo found several shipping containers filled with old, rotting historical documents from the town. The sort of things that most functioning governments would preserve. Maricao, Noviembre, 1911. Wow. It might not make national headlines, but it was a big deal for the people of Maricao. Increíble. And it was pretty Uf. embarrassing for the mayor. Caca de ratones. 1883, 1883. What? Wow, esto es historia, esto es historia de este pueblo. Tirada aquí. Miren, comida por ratones. Vamos a ver. Ahí hay personal del municipio. Vamos para allá. A ver qué. A ver qué tienen que decir. Sé que no tienen que ver mucho con esto, pero te voy a preguntar. Este, el alcalde. ¿No? ¿Ah? ¿No está por ahí? ¿Ustedes sabían de unos vagones que hay ahí? Que están perdidos. Pero no sé, te pregunto. Pero usted trabaja para el municipio. ¿No? Lo puedo grabar. Lo puedo grabar, usted es empleado municipal. Pero no, yo le estoy haciendo una simple pregunta, caballero. No, voy a llamar a quien usted quiera. Usted es empleado municipal. Le estoy haciendo una simple pregunta. Una simple pregunta. ¿Usted conoce, usted conoce de esos vagones? Pero es una simple pregunta, caballero. Ahí viene la policía. Buenas tardes. Gracias. La gente felina, feliz. Gracias, caballero. ¿Cómo están? Muy bien, gracias. Hello. Hello. Dímelo, papá. ¿Cuál? ¿En serio? Wow, wow. Dale. O sea, que ese era el alcalde que yo grabé. Pero yo le pregunté si es el alcalde y me dijo que no. Qué vergüenza. The guy who said he didn't know where the mayor was, he is the mayor. His friend in the truck behind him even gave him away when Lorenzo asked. O sea, que quedó como, como, ay, mi madre, qué vergüenza. En vivo. sentido de nivel de país, ¿verdad? Claro, Un claro, ahí, claro, aquí, claro, claro. Ahí. Sí, seguro que sé cómo es. Claro, descaro. Ay, pero ¿sabe qué, jefe? ¿A quién tiene que hacer el trabajo, sabe? Ahora tengo que ir porque me hicieron una querella para el cuartel. El mismo alcalde me hizo una querella. Sí, pero... Una, un, un loco ahí. Gracias, gracias papá. Gracias, gracias. Gracias por sacar eso. Ah, bueno, mira, si no nos vacilando. Vemos porque... su página, no nos enteramos de ese vagón. Sí, cosa. pues miren, ahí estaba tirado esos vagones. No hay uno, hay varios. Qué vergüenza de alcalde tiene maricado. Nada, mi gente, tengo que apagar la cámara. Lógicamente, voy para la querejilla. Llegó el león, papá. Estoy para ti. Toda tuya. Puerto Rico. So, el mismo alcalde me hizo una querella. Pero ¿saben qué? Yo le he dicho una y un millón de veces. Como único. Como único. Escuchen bien. Como único. A mí me callan. Es eliminando. ¿Qué tal aquí? Ven aquí es dangeroso. If I do a Facebook Live, I do it and I go away quick. I don't stay around. I start to find out a lot of things about Maricao, you know. I don't expect that a town like this small was so corrupted. Even the mayor take me to court. 
Politics are dangerous in this country, and they do whatever. They disappear anybody if you are not on their side. You worry about your safety? I worry about my safety, yes, every day. I change cars all the time. You know, I've got bulletproof jacket, cameras everywhere. You know, I have to take care of myself because I know the risk. I know if something happened to me, it's gone, that's it. My mother will never will know what happened to me. It's hard to tell how much of Lorenzo's paranoia is actually rooted in reality. We couldn't find any examples of credible threats on his life. But there's no question he's made plenty of enemies. Most of the politicians he targets have never experienced his brand of relentless, in-your-face tactics before. Many of them wouldn't otherwise face this level of public scrutiny. Only about 6,000 people live in Maricao, but more than half a million watched Lorenzo's video on Facebook. In Puerto Rico, where there are 78 different municipalities, each with its own mayor, it's hard to hold everyone accountable, even for the government. People think that corruption is the big names. No, corruption is the small names, the rank and file, the mid-management. That's where corruption is really big. Because the big names know that they're in the eye of everybody. Everybody's watching you. But the small ones, no, nobody's watching me. Well, here in Puerto Rico, sometimes that means the mayors around the island. Municipalities are autonomous, and you can hide. So mayors are a big focus in any government agency that has to do with corruption. I mean, there are cases here in Puerto Rico where, where people held the mayorship for 20, forever. 20 years. Yeah, forever. One of them is the mayor of Maricao. I fined him so many times. The last fine was $51,000. That's no easy stuff. He hates me because I, you know, whatever the, the uh, office does, it's public. And he hates me because, yes, it has to be public. That's transparency. Have you heard of Lorenzo Delgado or El Leon Fiscalizador? Oh, yes, definitely. I think the government knew that there was this warehouse. It's mind-boggling. But they knew. Even the governor knew that this was this warehouse. The mayor of Ponce knew that this was this uh, warehouse. But they all said that they didn't know about it after. Ever, they pointed fingers yeah, at each other sure, afterwards. That's the, that's, the, that's the bad part of it. You forgot that you have a warehouse there because you have warehouses all over the island? I can understand that. But pinpointing people, they're saying, I didn't know about it. Excuse me, a lot of BS. As, as much as the people here like him, I've noticed that there's a counterbalance, and it's that a lot of folks in government do not like him. If you're nailed by somebody, would you like him? No, of I don't. Of course I don't, not. I don't of course them. not. So, he's liked by a lot of people, and he's disliked by a lot of people too. Lo bueno no se cambia, por eso seguimos con Mayita. Another person with plenty of reasons to dislike Lorenzo is Maria Maita Melendez, the longtime mayor of his hometown Ponce. Da la casualidad, verdad? De pura casualidad llegó un muchacho de la nada y empezó a fiscalizar y, y a, le ha cogido el, el, eh, la credibilidad mayita y se la tiene en el piso. Que eso es el león fiscal. Se la tiene He's been going after Melendez, who was first elected in 2008, for years. Este, lo que es la alcaldesa de Ponce, María Mayita Melendez, que hace tiempo debió haber irse. Over. ¿Cuántas veces María Mayita Melendez me cogió el teléfono? Nunca. And over. Mayita, tú eres corrupta también y vas para afuera también, ¿oíste? Para que sepa. And over again. She managed to mostly ignore him publicly until Lorenzo found that warehouse in her municipality and roped her into an island-wide scandal that threatened her re-election campaign. Mayita, esto va a ser su último cuatrenio, no matter what. No matter what, cojan mi palabra, ustedes tranquilícense. I didn't know that there was a warehouse with full of, of supplies for emergencies in, in Ponce. I don't, I mean... I, I, we don't knew it. I, I have no idea. Any mayor need, need, even knew that there was a warehouse. Those, those warehouses are owned by the central government. Aside from these protests, there's kind of been like a citizen journalist 
investigator sort of movement. And there's, you have kind of a public battle with someone living in here in Ponce, who his name is Lorenzo Delgado. Enzo Delgado, he goes by El Leon Fiscalizador. Um, he's not a journalist, okay? He's not a journalist. What is he's a he? person who people pay for uh, making news. You think he's, co he's getting money from people? What are you sure? They, how, how, they, how do we live? And I know I have seen him, people have seen him with uh, an a opponent from, him, from my political party. Does that mean he's getting money from them or that he supports their uh, political views? I don't views? know. Ask him. You better ask him. You better ask him. I've spoken to people who work for the government here in Puerto Rico, who work for your party, who said that they can't say it in public, but they support what he's doing. They like that someone is looking into corruption. Does that surprise you? That's they believe that there is someone in corruption? They like that, he, that there is someone who is looking into corruption here in Puerto Rico. Well, maybe. You cannot stop corruption, let me tell you this. If the government of Puerto Rico did corruption, it has to be proof. I just, I just want to ask about El Leon Fiscalizador, who you've said is not- I don't not... know him really because I haven't talked to him. But you, and, but you uh, know who he is. I mean, you... well, I, I have seen him in the street. I have seen, but I haven't talked to him. It's very clear that you don't like each other. Is that fair? No, he doesn't like me because he's uh, he's uh, favoring the opponent persons that are in other political parties. So he's sometimes telling things that are not true. In 2018, Lorenzo posted a video of him confronting a member of Melendez's security detail who he says was following him in his car. When I brought it up, Melendez first acted like she didn't know what I was talking about. He posted a video of him being followed by someone named Reynaldo Rodriguez, who I, th I think is a security, part of the security here, or part of your security. Reynaldo Rodriguez. Then said she had nothing to do with it. You, no, you have spoken, no, you've no, spoken no, publicly no. saying that you didn't order anyone to follow him, but... It's, it's the truth. That guy, Reynaldo, he's a member of my, of my escort, and he was free. He was in vacation time. Then, said it didn't happen. He, he was not following him. That's not true. He was in the same, in the same area that he was going, in his own car. And you should talk to him, he's there, he's here. And he will explain to you that he was not following him. They went to court and present a, a case uh, against uh, this guy, and he lose. He lose. The truth is that no judge ever ruled on whether or not Lorenzo was being followed by a member of her security. The only thing a court decided was to throw out a restraining order Lorenzo had requested. So you can see, this is a political issue. And I am not here to talk about political issues. I'm just having time to work for my people. Not about political issues about a guy I haven't met, I don't know him, and say things, bad things about me because pe other people pay him. That's why I tell you, I am an honest, not corrupted woman because I work and love. Passion serves the people. Thank you for sharing this story. You. Thank you. Um, I think she has a meeting she's got to go to. Okay. Gracias un montón. Le agradezco su tiempo. Yo sé que esto es un... Lo que pasa es que algunas veces uno tiene que pre preguntar o hacer preguntas que tienen otras claro, personas. Pero no, pero no soy... Mira, no ese soy... caballero yo no le he... Porque ese caballero tuvo 12 años en cárcel. Además de que estuvo en cárcel, Él, a la esposa que vive en Ponce le robó el carro, sus tarjetas y ha hecho muchas cosas negativas. Y yo, the things that were in the warehouse, check their, check his shelter, check his shelter, and you will find many of the things that were in the warehouse in the, his shelter. Don't say I said it. The people told me. Okay. Thank you. Lorenzo, ¿me escucha? Dímelo, papá, te escucho. Uh, mira, uh, acabo de terminar la entrevista con la alcaldesa acá de Ponce. <risa> eh, ¿Cómo fue? fue? Fue un poquito difícil, ella es bien animada. Pero mira, tú tienes... Ella dijo 
me dijo, bueno, ella tiene unas acusaciones de ti um, y pues quería ver si tienes un poquito de tiempo para reunirnos, pa, para solamente claro. hablar. Claro. ¿Qué dijo? Yo, ah, me, bueno, yo, yo te digo en persona, o hablamos claro. de eso en persona, ok. She defended herself, obviously, said that she's, she didn't know about the warehouses. When I asked her about you, she first was like upset. She said, you know, he's not a journalist. But she also made some accusations, you know, she, which I feel like, I feel like I need to know, you know, yeah, whether yeah. they're true or not. Do it, she, do it, do it. Like how there are rumors, she insinuated that um, you had taken some of the things from the warehouse. She told me to check your storage facility. Never, never. I don't take nothing. She's the mayor. She's friend of the governor. If they think that I have one bottle of water, why they don't go after me? You know why? Because it just works. Imagine, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take something like from the warehouse, from myself, this is the most stupid thing. You know what I mean? It's not, it don't even make sense. Say something else. What are you gonna need? Spy water? Baby food? <laughs> you know? Everything was inspired. What are you going to take to my house? She said that you have been taking money from politicians, from people who... Never. You know what? I already say it many times. Si a mí, si cualquier persona, escuchen, si cualquier partido, sea rojo o sea azul, me puede probar a mí que me ha dado un dólar. Miren, un dólar. Un, no cien, no mil, no diez mil dólares. Un dólar. Yo quito mi página, esta página la quito completa y me voy de aquí y me voy para los Estados Unidos. El león fiscalizador desaparece mañana. Si algún político realmente puede probarme a mí que yo me he vendido con cualquier color. Ok, el león no se ha vendido, el león no se vende. When I started this, I started because I was um, tired of the corruption. So if you get one dollar from one politician, I'm corrupted too. So it's not going to work. Then. She also said that I should talk to your ex-wife who lives in Ponce. Okay. She said that she's accused you of taking things from her. Never. My ex-wife? <laughs> First, it's not my... You see how much she knows? She don't know nothing. First, it's not my ex-wife. It was my girlfriend. And second, we came from Orlando here. And we have a great relationship. Have you ever been in prison? Yes. Yes. I was in prison. When Lorenzo was in his early 20s, he was arrested for dealing cocaine in Florida. He spent most of the next decade in prison. It was a long time, like 84 months, I think. So. It was five years on probation. What was it like in prison? To be honest, um, and this is going to sound weird, if I'm born again and you give me the options, I don't change nothing in my life. I learn who I am right now. When I get out, years ago, that almost 20 years ago, I get out a complete different person. You know, my father worked all his life. He was police for 20 something years. He take us to Florida in 94. And my father said, you know what, I want, I want you, you guys, you guys have a better life. And you know what happened? A drunk guy killed my father driving. And I was in jail when that happened, bro. Yeah. You know? So <laughs> I can swear that I always have that on my mind, that I have to pay that debt to my, my people, and I'm doing it right now. I'm paying that debt, doing the right thing, and show them that, that you know, my work, it's, it's, it's worth it. But do, you, but do you think about the fact that, like, you were sitting in a jail cell, what, 20 years ago? You were in a jail cell for 10 years, mm -hmm. and now you're, like, going around the streets of Puerto Rico, people are cheering around, you have people following you. Do you think about how crazy that is? Yeah, all the time. Donde están esos amigos que me decían que en las buenas y en las malas conmigo estaría. What's the side of you that the public doesn't see? It's not this super guy that find out things, that super guy that defend the society, this guy that go over corruption, that fight corruption. 
no matter what, that he don't care, that he's not scared. But I'm not a superhero. It scares me. I'm so lonely. I like to go eat by myself. I just want to think and eat and think. If you ask me, really, I don't have a life no more. Everything's gone. <clears throat> Saludos, mi gente. Saludos. Muy buenas tardes. COVID-19 Tracker. Por lo menos usted tiene con esto eh, una idea de cómo van las cosas con esto del coronavirus. Cuando primero comienza el COVID, nunca hubo un wow, ¿qué voy a hacer? Oh, my God. Eh, ¿Qué pasó aquí? Eh, ¿Me voy a quedar en mi casa? No, no, no. Mi gente, vamos a poner esa, esa persona que está ahí. Mi página siempre ha sido para ayuda al ciudadano. Mi deber, primeramente, era informar al pueblo de realmente qué era el COVID, cómo cuidarse, cómo poder combatir esto en familia, qué cosas hacer, qué cosas no hacer. Ese era mi, mi, mi norte en ese momento. La política murió completamente. Tanto trabajo en justicia que se han hecho este, en este pueblo. Ojalá y vaya para afuera, de verdad. No sé si vamos a celebrar todos juntos en, Isa, en, en Santa Isabel. Déjame mandarle un mensaje al alcalde de Utuado. Cuando se están acercando las elecciones, volví a la calle, empezar a dejarle al ciudadano, dejarle dicho al ciudadano que mira, este político, este alcalde, este representante, este senador, no se olviden de que él ha hecho mucho daño o él le ha fallado al pueblo durante todo este tiempo. ¿Qué pasó con ese dinero? ¿A dónde fue a parar ese dinero? Antes de las elecciones, habían ya siete alcaldes que yo estaba fiscalizando por mala administración en general. Ponce, Guánica, Santa Isabel... Maricao, Arecibo, Utuado y Atajuntas. Esos siete alcaldes se fiscalizaron y los siete perdieron la reelección. Ganaste. ¿Y entonces gané en cuántos? Uno, dos, tres. No, no, pero ¿en cuánto? ¿En todo perdí en uno? No, no, no perdiste ninguno. Y ese día bailé en vivo, ese día canté, ese día celebré muchísimo porque ahí es que uno entiende que no se está perdiendo el tiempo. Ahí es que uno en, cae en cuenta y uno dice, wow, increíble, lo logré, lo logramos. Es una decisión del pueblo, es la, es la democracia y yo la acepto. It's not just that several longtime mayors lost their reelection bids. Many of them weren't even close. The now ex-governor, Wanda Vázquez, didn't even make it past her primaries. It's impossible to know exactly how much of it was because of Lorenzo. But for him, it was an obvious sign that he was doing something right. The last time I saw Lorenzo was almost a year ago. It was before, before COVID had happened, before the pandemic. Lorenzo! Oh, I see you've got the merch. You've got the yeah. Enzo mask. The pandemia, pretty much. I don't know, everything changed. The pandemia changed everything. Uh, because we can't go nowhere. All the news was about pandemia. I just trying to, like every day, show the people in Puerto Rico how the government works. And they're learning. Election was a few days ago, and the election result shows that the work that we're doing is working. Why do you say that? What do you mean? Well, this election is very balanced. It's great for, the, for Puerto Rico. It's bad for them. But it's good for us, because now, when they want to do something, they have to talk with everybody. And that's how it's supposed to be. It has to be a consensus, you know? So I don't know if it was because of him, but he's done a good job kicking mayors out of office. Don't despair. Things are getting better, and things will get better. Because people are finding out that They either lose office, like some of the majors were ousted during this election. Any of them. So, that's a way of telling them, listen, I'm sick and tired of what you've been doing. 
If you keep doing the same thing over and over again, don't expect better results. Why do you think that he's been able to build such a big audience? Why he's like, it's resonated with so many people? It's the new thing. Somebody who gets into social media, like he has, with things that are explosive, like things that have, you know, aired, of course it's gonna get exposure, a lot of exposure. So what's next? Well, I went to create a, a whole chain in Puerto Rico of Leones. I have like 16 people already that sign up, and they ready to start anytime. Are you planning to have like a meeting with them? To yes. When? Carlos, me escucha? No, no te escuchamos, Carlos. Nítido. Pon el teléfono así, eh, eh, horizontal. When I start to do this, I don't even know how to turn on a camera. Nobody helped me. So I learned little by little, little by little. So now, those people that want to do the same thing I'm doing, they don't have to go through what I went through. Jamás en la vida yo pensé que iba a estar fiscalizando. Todo, todo fue con mucho esfuerzo. Y, y esto no es nada, esto no es un negocio para mí. Esto es una labor social. Y así quiero que siga. Aunque no lo crean, yo gasto más de lo que entra. A mí me han hecho miles de ofertas. Canales de televisión, eh, muchísimas cosas. Y de todas las he rechazado. Y de que esto no es pa, para crecer ni enriquecer al león fiscalizador. Que yo pienso que el día de mañana... Si somos más, Puerto Rico va a llegar a ser un mejor Puerto Rico y nuestros hijos, nuestros nietos, nuestros hermanos, nuestras familias, nuestros vecinos, podemos tener un mejor Puerto Rico. You make mistakes, but if you are alive, you can make it right. I want the people to know that, that I try. And I try to be an example from the whole island. You know, we are good people. We just um, need to help each other. I hope someday we can have a better Puerto Rico.